Hey guys, how's it going? Paul Harris here. Welcome back to another one of my videos. Today, as the title of this video suggests, I'm going to go over 10 things that I think you should know how to do with pivot tables. Okay, hopefully you learned something. If you do, hit that like button, subscribe. Let's get into it. Okay, here we go. Here's a set of data in Excel. And the first thing we're going to learn how to do is how to actually pivot a set of data. This will be my first of the 10 items. So the way you do that is you select the area, which you can do by clicking Control A, and then you have to go on to Insert, which is up here. Click on Pivot Table. You can click OK, and it will create a pivot table in a separate tab. If you do that again and click Control A, and you press Insert Pivot Table, by clicking on Existing Worksheet, you can then select the cell that you would like the pivot table to be alongside the data. Okay, and then you can start creating the pivot table as such, like this, bring in revenue. And that's a simple pivot table. That's how you create a pivot table in a separate tab or within the same tab. That's number one. Now, the second point I wanna mention is you can use a shortcut, which is what I use on my PC. Unfortunately, I'm recording this on my Mac. But if you have a PC and you're using Excel, you can press Control A to select the data. Then you can press Alt. Alt will basically uh, allow you to access the panel. Then you press the key N. N denotes the, the insert section of your panel. Then if you press V, it will select the pivot table option. So you press Alt, N, V, Enter. And that is how you create a pivot table after you've selected a load of data. Um, using a shortcut, which is quite handy. Number three, number three is how do you refresh a pivot table if the set of data changes? So if I copy this data, add it below, as such, you can see now the pivot table that we've created up here, I may now want to include the additional items that I've just added in below. How do I do that? Well, I click on this pivot table, then you click up here, to pivot table analyze then you go on to this button here which is change data source if you change a data source now you can click and refresh the area again like this and press ok now if i go up to the top these numbers have now changed to include the additional set of data that this table has within it. Point number four is how do you edit a pivot table so it looks more user friendly? So here it's quite a simple looking table. You have chairs, you have uh, years going across the columns. If I bring in more detail, like if I bring in color, you can now see it's created a list where it's like a subtotal that you extend the box like this. I don't really like it looking like that. I prefer it in a tabular view. The way you get into a different view is you click on this design. Lots of people right click. I don't like right clicking. If you click on this design, it's a lot quicker. And you go onto this report layout and you click tabular view. And now it shows a set of data in a lot more friendly way. You see like it splits out the product and color into different columns as opposed to just having it in one long, one long column. Next, you might not want to have subtotals, so you can go on here, don't show subtotals. You can take off all the grand totals. You could repeat all the items. And that's how you edit a set of data. So now it looks more user friendly. And that's number four. Number five is how do you use the pivot table like any regular cell within Excel? What do I mean by that? Well, well, when you click equals and then you try and click on a value, usually your Excel is set up in a way that you can't, it shows this get pivot data um, formula because I've done, I've, all I've done is there is I've clicked equals, selected a cell within the pivot table and it's, and it's auto generated this get pivot data formula, which doesn't seem that bad. But now if I scroll down like this, all of a sudden, because it's on get pivot table, it doesn't drag down as a usual cell would. You know, you'd expect an equals formula when I drag down, it would pick up the values going down the rows. So what I want to do is get rid of this get pivot data uh, formula. So I can use this pivot data as just um, a regular cell within Excel. Well, the way you do that is you click on this pivot table, 
you click pivot table analyze you click on options and you see there's this generate get pivot data tick box untick that now when i click on equals and s and go to n5 see how it doesn't create a get pivot table formula anymore it just creates it just says n5 so now when i drag down aha look at that it works now trust me when i say that was revolutionary when i found that out <laughs> number six Number six is a simple one that you probably should know if you've just clicked around. But as you've pivoted this data, you may want to revert back to the list. Now, obviously, I have it right next to um, right next to the table, so I could put a filter on this. But see how I have chair brown, so brown chairs, and I have 2020. Maybe I just want to know the list that backs that up. Well, you can just double click the data and it'll create a separate tab where it has just the data for chairs that are brown within 2020. Number seven on this list of things you should know about pivot tables is you can add, you can add these things called slicers. Now what's a slicer? It's basically a filter without, you know, if I had a filter here like month, it adds a little filter box up here where you can see you can have this drop-down box. There's a slightly nicer way that you can actually create a filter box, and that's by adding a slicer. So if you go up here to Pivot Data Analyze, and you click on Insert Slicer, and then I click on Month, it now creates this kind of looking box. And now I can select the specific months like this. So if you're preparing a report for other people, you may not want a load of months. You may instead want to denote it by having these kind of boxes. So that's how you could do it. You click on the Excel, Pivot Table Analyze, and you click on Insert Slicer. So number eight, I'm going to show you how you add in a calculation to, um, you know, a separate calculation that may not already be presentable within your original table of data. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you remember, I pulled in revenue and I can pull in, if I just um, show field list, I can pull in units as well. Okay. Now, what I have here is prices, but these are prices shown on an individual line basis. If I was to bring in the price like this, it will sum the prices I need to take off the Jan filter, but if I take it off, you can now see more clearly what I'm trying to say here. So I have here the revenue, the units for the entire year, and the price. Now the price isn't going to be a true price, because that's going to be just the sum of all the specific prices from the entire year. And it's not going to give you the true reflection on what revenue is divided by units. So I might need to add in a separate box that shows me that. Now the way you do that is you press Control shift plus You have to click it on one of these values. You can't click it on the, um, the column titles, like color and product. You have to click it on, say, Revenue. You press Control shift plus and it brings up this Insert Calculated Field. Now, I might want to include here, like I said, price or average price. And the way I now, uh, I now I just to put a simple formula in here, which is Revenue divided by units and you can see that's the average price so now I can take out the sum of price and just leave the average price and there you have a calculated field within your pivot table that wasn't originally there number nine is you can group certain categories within your pivot table what do I mean by that well I have different colors here black brown gray and red I might want black and brown to just be one category instead of showing it as two categories. So I can highlight the categories. I can go to Pivot Table Analyze and I can go Group Selection. It creates a separate colored column. Now I can edit the column name like this. I can edit this black and brown. And I can remove Show Field List and I can now remove the original color selection. So now it's just left a separate uh, color which is black and brown 
And that's how you create a separate column. So that's quite useful. The last one I'm going to show you is another shortcut, which becomes quite useful, believe it or not. I know I haven't shown you it yet, but it's how you remove a larger variety of categories. So for instance, I might want to remove revenue and units at once. To be honest, you can sometimes have pivot tables with loads, so like loads of different columns with different kind of values in. So you could have revenue, units, price, but you could have them for like, you know, you just have loads of different KPIs. You could have loads of different values that are assigned that aren't as specific as just revenue, unit, and price. But say you wanted to remove them all at once instead of having to um, go to show field list and drag them out. The way you can do that is pressing control and minus, and you can see it removes it automatically. That was just one, but you can select an area like that, and you can press control minus, and now you can see it's removed both at one time. And now it's just left you with average price. Again, I say when that com becomes more handy when you have, l you know, like 30 different items within a pivot table, you might just want to remove loads all at once, so you press control minus on the categories you want to remove. That's it. That's the 10 items that you should know about pivot tables, useful tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. Hopefully you found that interesting. Hopefully there was something there that you actually didn't know already. If you did enjoy that, please do like, subscribe. I have a downloadable link in the description of this video where you can download loads of different Excel formulas. So follow the link below if you're interested and download that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, subscribe. Bye-bye.